Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on Visual Basic and today we're going to be going over three more things with the GUI and that's uh, timers or just uh, dates, the date uh, object itself, uh, track bars and menu strips. I think I can get all these in here. So let's start with dates. Now before we actually go into GUI I have to actually teach you dates. I haven't done that yet. So um, uh, let me take, use the date time picker. I won't be using the month calendar. Uh, I'm just going to use the date time picker and just have that here. And, you know, as you can see, this, this is the date of today, as you can see, by default. Um, but let's just create a simple button. And let's have it called um, date, btn, date. And uh, let's just have it say date. So I'll double-click this guy and let's, well, create a date. Uh, a date object and be able to retrieve the date. So we'll just create a variable called, I don't know, I'll call it today as date. So that's going to be the data type we're going to be dealing with. This is a legitimate data type. And should we initialize it right now? Or, you know what? I'll just leave it uninitialized and I'll initialize it right here, actually. So today is equal to, and a key, short keyword for just referring to now is just typing out now. And I'll have a message box dot show pop up, and I'll have today dot to string, and or not too short date string. Well, I can show that to you uh, in a moment actually. Um, now I don't know. Okay, and information, and okay, so I, I'm actually just I just want to string for now. So I'll press F5, and when I press date, we get the current date, February 27th, 2012, at 107 in the morning. Yes, I am up right now at 107. And 41 seconds. Watch the seconds. It'll be different when I click it again. See, now it's 11 seconds later. And that's because every time we click it, uh, it recreates this and resets uh, whatever this current moment is. So that's pretty much how you create your own date object and you can also change it by doing things such as today equals um, maybe you want to uh, add time to it for example so maybe we want to create another variable called later as date and you know we actually don't really have to do that what we could do you know what I won't show that to you now um, allow me to show you the other method that they're trying to show me here dot to short date string. So if I click save, there's also a short time string as well. So this one just shows the date, February 27th, and short time should only show you the time, of course. 108 a.m. So that's pretty cool. And so anyways, let me sh uh, create another variable as I was going to. And let's actually try changing what time it is. So today could be equal to or let's have later is equal to today but then actually edit it edit a little bit. So we could add time to it. So we could add years, could add hours, days, whatever you'd like. I'm just gonna use the add years and basically any kind of numerical value. So I'd like one year later. So I click save I press F5, I click date, and oh, whoops. I want to say to string here. Yeah, as you could tell, um, it is, since it is past one in the morning, I am tired. So I'm going to probably be making some mistakes here. And wow, I get uh, January 1st. Oh, I want later. That's why. I want later and. There we go. I also noticed that I didn't uh, keep today as now. Okay, so today will be equal to now, and then later will be equal to whatever now is, adding a year to it. Okay, there we go. This is what I get for staying up so late. There we go. So it's February 27th, but now it's 2013 instead. So now how do we work this with, like, let's say this? Well, we can double-click the form itself, so we have the form load, and what we can do is what was it called the date time picker picker one dot value instead of equal to something 
So let's actually um, cut all of these. I'm going to change this into a comet here. We don't need this. And let me cut all this. And let's paste it in here. There we go. And let's set the value equal to what should we do? So should we do later? And and this has to be a date. It can't be a string. This has to be a date because they're setting a date equal to a date. So there we go. See now now instead of uh, now it showed us uh, February twenty seventh, twenty thirteen, which is actually now a Wednesday as opposed to a Monday, Monday at one in the morning. Okay, and that's uh, pretty much how you can set the time, and you can also change it to your own custom time as well. So what you do is you throw in a couple pound signs, and then within here type in, let's say, I don't know, the month, slash the day, slash the year. Let's go 2003. And you can throw in the time as well. So let's go 2.36 in the mornings. It's 2.36, and that's the seconds. A.M. And there we go. And it kind of adjusted something for me. I guess I made a little bit of a mistake, but uh, there we go. And there we go. We get August 13th at 2003, which is also Wednesday as well. So that's pretty cool. And another thing we can do is, well, I guess that's all. I guess that's all I really had to show you. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes right now. Oh my goodness, I'm tired. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you were track bars. So I have to go to all Windows forms, and let's just use a horizontal scroll bar. So H scroll bar. I'll throw that on there. And I'll throw a label as well. So now I'm going to close this, put a label on here. And the number here will change depending on the value here. So what you can do is set a maximum of maybe 100. Uh, I'll actually change the maximum to 1,000 just because. And I'll keep the minimum at 0. And I'll have the large change. Now the large change, what that is, is every time you click not on the arrow, but off the arrow on the, sp uh, the bar itself, uh, it'll move that bigger amount. And then the small change, I'll keep at 10, is when you actually click the arrows itself. And let's see here. So I'll want to double click this and then have a series of if statements. So if h scroll bar 1 dot value is equal to, now we're moving in intervals of 10, right? So I actually don't want this to be a max of a thousand. That's too many. Let's keep it a hundred, and let's have the large change only twenty instead. So large change change will be twenty, and the small will be ten, and it'll go from that to a hundred. So we'll have the label I created, label one, dot text equal to zero. So I actually want this to be zero right here. Oh, whoops, sorry. String. There we go. And then I'll copy all of this, copy, and then down here I'll throw an else paste. There we go. So then I'll copy, and then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm not sure if that was all I had to do. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Oh. I was actually missing a few. And then 90, and then 100. Then right here will be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And basically what this is checking is the value of this right here, the minimum to maximum. Every time you click the bar, the small change will, it will go up in value of 10, if you click off off the arrow, then it will move uh, in intervals of 20 instead. But anyways, the label will change for us. So uh, let's run this and see how it works. So I didn't change the default text to zero actually. There we go. See, there we go. Now it's zero. Um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Ah, what's going on here? Let me uh, fix this up for just a moment. Um, so small change is 10. So this is 100, right? One hundred. 
Small change is 10, large change is 20. And this default should be, I'll change the default here to actual actually zero. And I don't know why it's doing that to me here. F5, 20, 40, 60, 80. Well, I have no idea why it's not going to 100. Let me ch change the maximum here. This does not make any sense. Let's change it to like 120. See, it's going 20 less. I don't understand why. If I change it back to 100, let's see what happens. Okay, well, for some reason, I have to go 20 higher. I have absolutely no idea why, but I'll go with it. But yeah, um, that's how you use those, oddly enough. And the other one is a trackbar. And how these work, basically, is you still have the minimum and maximums. The maximum and minimum. And a tick frequency which is what you use for when you click uh, either side along uh, you know how often how far this goes over uh, so that's how you use these as well but I'm not going to show that now then the very last thing I would like to show is, are the menu strips so let's get these out now these are really really cool you'll see these a lot on uh, homemade applications people make so you click menu strip and you just click anywhere in your form and so what's the first one you want it to be called file this is usually what's called, and what's this? Um, help. And don't worry about the X one. The X one's automatically created every time you make another one, uh, one right before it, but this one won't be visible. Uh, so let's see here. Type here, what should this say? Um, open. Let's see here. Close, or not close. Let's make it save. Uh, let's make this one a close. So when you press F5 and you look at this, it's pretty cool, right? No code though, so and there's nothing in that one. So let's call this one about. And uh, you can uh, right-click this, and you know you can insert things. Let's insert a separator, and let's actually move this separator down here. There we go. So when you run this application, now there's a little separator bar right here. So that's pretty cool, right? Uh, and you can also add in shortcut keys. That would probably be the last thing I show you. So insert shortcut. Oh, properties. I'm going to go to properties. And let's look at shortcut keys. Um, we want it to be a shift. That's usually what it is. Or is it usually control? Nah, I'll just go with shift. Why not? Shift F5. And let's see. Where's F5? Here it is and just click that again and oh it could be a multiple things control alternate oh, okay so they use co a combination so it, it's automatically printed right there if you look at uh... insert no just properties well it's it's there oh right here short show shortcut keys um, so if you press f5 um, there it is visible no code there so let's add some code by double clicking it and message box dot show nothing special about this application info okay exclamation why not let's do the exclamation so I press that five then I click the about nothing special about this application if I go, what was it, shift F5, there it is again. So that works. And what's the last one I'd like to show you? Probably the close. So me dot close. So I click save, then I run this application, file, close, then it closed. Um, so that's about it for this uh, tutorial. So it's pretty, pretty cool, some of these things that you can do. And um, I hope this was uh, useful for you, and I think this might be it for the GUI. It's just a... Uh, just two videos. It wasn't wasn't much. Uh, a lot of information, but really not. Um, so uh, I this might be it for my Visual Basic Level One for sure. I can't think of anything else really to do that wouldn't be considered Level Two in my opinion. 
Um, so I hope this whole playlist was helpful for you, and uh, I'll see you next time.